Sleeping Gods uh, from Red Raven Games. Now, just look. This is still in shrink. I haven't even started opening it yet because it's. I, of course, wanted to wait to show it off here. Uh, I don't know how well you can tell it. Like, this undersea monster is actually textured on the box and, and sticks up so it's not just flat flat art so you can even fill that for the wrap we got this we got uh, the back kind of showing out a layout of how it would be it's a two to four player game um, age is 13 plus I like how it says one to 20 hours uh, so for those who don't know about this game it's very story driven uh, play as much as you want stop when you want to and so that's why it says 1 to 20 if you want to play the whole thing through at once it could take a, it could be 20 hours or so of gameplay but a lot of people are going to play one or two little like partial scenarios of it uh, so maybe playing for an hour or two and then come back to it now it's, it's two to four players now of course I'm going to find a way to play this solo in some way be it I play as two two different players at the same time, whatever it may be, at some point I will be playing this on stream in some way. So I look forward to that. But for now, let's check out all these great components that came with it. And we'll have some fun. Starting off the night with our unboxing of what we've done before. Essentially, board game ASMR unwrapping. Some people like to hear that. The sound of something new, at least. Okay, so let's see what happens first thing. First up in this box, uh, face down, or maybe not face down, maybe it just doesn't have a title page. Okay, so this is the map book, Spiral Bound. So since I did have a chance to play this, I can actually talk about some of these things and how it works. But essentially, there's different sections of land and sea here. Uh, each sea portion is basically where you'll be sailing around on your ship, and each C uh, section is connected to so many numbers. And with that, once you're in that section, you can decide to basically take an action and go to one of those numbers and read the story line for that number. Now, to make it so you don't spoil anything, they've taken these numbers and spread them throughout the book, mi mixed them up, and randomized them so you're not having like one and two next to each other and accidentally reading the next part before you, you're supposed to. So that, that's always great to see. Uh, so I've played on this first map portion and moved a little bit around. So there's different artwork describing like when there's bad storm if you move into a certain area. And then some of the storylines kind of indicate or, or hint at, oh, the su such and such was seen near a bridge or... Uh, near an island or whatever and so then you you start to kind of pinpoint things together without it saying okay at number 34 it's this it's like oh you assume okay they're seen near a bridge there's a bridge up there so maybe you attempt to go sail over there to do something and so each of these pages has more map stuff um i believe part of the story is you can kind of sail across map pages to the next to the next side um, and then back and forth because it has these numbers on them. Okay, go to sail to page 9 or whatever, depending on which page you're currently on, of course. And so you can kind of sail north, you can sail south, and it tells you what page that actually sails to. So if you are to open this whole thing up, lay this whole map out, uh, you'd see the full system. So that, that's a, it's a fun way to do it. Instead of it being a hefty board that sprawls out, covers your whole table, uh, you can just turn to what you need, and it keeps it a bit more compact. And so, it, kind of for me, I don't have a huge table, so that makes it so I can actually show off more on screen as well when I'm streaming. So we get this journey log, so you can kind of keep track of things as you play. 
so when you when you end a session, so say you, you play one or two scenarios, we stop after an hour or two, whatever it may be, you can kind of say, okay, we stopped at such, such, such location. Here's uh, what our ship currently had. Here's what each player had, uh, cards and such. So that way, next time you open it up, you can like drop, put it out on the table, be like, okay, here's what we had last time. Here's what this player had or this player was using. And so it's easier to set it back up as well. So you don't have to try to remember every single little thing. So that's a, a nice little uh, packet of those. Um, so you can also play it multiple times. Um, so you're not stuck playing with the same people. While it, it can kind of be considered a legacy in a way, these story choices you make are kind of choose your own adventure. You're not stuck in one linear path. You, you decide when and what you do. And the back of these pages actually shows, uh, in minor detail, the full map system from the map book. So, for example, page uh, two and three that like we you would start in right here kind of shows the same numbers from the book that we looked at and then how those pages actually connect across to each other. So if you were to sell upward, you can see that pages 16, 17 or above, 2 and 3, whatever it may be. So while there might be a standard order in that book, the whole map is laid out, so you're not guaranteed to sell. You could like, oh, I'm going to sell this way and then up, or I'm going to go back down come over here. And so the page order is not going to be consistent, depending on how you choose to sail around. And then next up we had the actual storybook. Now I'm not going to try to read too much out of this because there's some minor spoilers. Um, I don't want to give away too much of what's going to go on. But I'll kind of show you how it works. It says it's the storybook. And so then they have all these numbers and you're going to give it, typically you're going to give it a choice. And then it says, okay, turn to number whatever or some of these might okay here like oh turn to 133 or if you choose this turn to 2.1 it's like it's a choose your own story adventure style reading and then as you go around you might come back to it so you're not limited to only choosing it once you do have the option to come back and then depending on the materials you currently hold it may say oh you can't do this right now or you're forced you can only make this decision now because of these certain um, goal cards you've picked up along the way. So that's nice and thick. Let me see if I can tell how many pages it is. At least I can tell you that. So it says 172 pages right here. Of course, this last few pages look blank. So you could potentially... If you were so inclined, write in it or store or something on it. I don't know. Kind of up to y'all. What you do with your own copy. And then you have your, your rule book. And where is it? I know it's here because I want to show it at the same time. You have a quick start guide. So from my experience, when I learned, when I got to play this game, the learning... It has a slight learning curve to set up the whole thing first. And so follow the quick start guide. Like op open everything up, set it to end piles to the side of the table. And then follow the quick start guide to grab what it's telling you to do. It's going to walk you through a, or a turn or two to understand how to play. And then expand on the pieces. And then you can come back to the rule book where it gives you a really solid ta table of contents right here on the front. So you don't have to search for that part. Gives you a good component list, uh, how to store everything, which is nice to see. Uh, your your general set of very well laid out. Um, so we've talked about rule books on here. We've seen some that aren't the best. We've seen some really good ones with layout, text, graphics. This does a good drop job with the graphical layout and the design of it and how it numbers it. And then you can find the number on here and see exactly what it compares it to. Uh, so it kind of goes over the basics and what each of the boards and cards and different symbols mean because uh, there are, are a decent amount of icons in this game, but they're very quick to learn. And then it talks about concepts and terms, but it does a, a good job of breaking them up into these sub, sub boxes. So you're not like, okay, when does this start? Where does this end? It's like, 
yep, this is all I need to read about this if I'm going to double check something. And then it goes over turn overviews. Um, because there's multiple steps for your turn. Again, this is co-op. And so even though one player may be taking the turn, you can discuss what y'all want to do together. Um, but of course, if it's their turn, they get to decide. Don't quarterback it. You may be, um, you're sailing on the same ship together. So of course you want to make decisions that help each other. And then it kind of talks about how different things work, challenges, combat, which are key. Uh, challenges and combat are pretty key in this game and how they work, but this is unboxing, so we're not going to go full into detail on that. Uh, it kind of talks about your tokens, uh, other general rules for combat, Ex some good examples, other rules, clarifications on things. And then it kind of talks about how the campaign works and how you, how to use that that log I already showed you. Uh, then if you're going to say play with different players, it ta talks you through how to do that. You can reset the game for a new campaign. So you're not limited to a one-time play, which is re really nice in a very large storytelling game like this. Uh, uh, variant options, final scoring, and then more clarifications and kind of uh, just more in detail things about certain things that helped out a lot uh, difficulty exp uh, exploring so just more notes to explain things in detail if you have a question about it a good index so oh I, what's this term you can go turn to that page and look in detail on it pretty easily um, gives you layout examples like for your player section and then a good layout of icons on the back of the book so you can lay it to the side glance at it and be like okay that's what that means uh, because there's so many it's hard to have uh, large uh, player reference cards because there'd be so much info on one which there I'm trying to remember if there are player reference cards but having it on the back like this where you can leave it on the table quick reference anyone can grab it look at it is also very helpful Okay, and then next up we had um, kind of a, I guess a quick reference sheet in a way. It's a lot of finer print, but you can leave that out as well. It kind of talks about setup, playing. So kind of instead of trying to pass the whole rule book, you can pass this around as well. So uh, someone else could attempt to look up some of the information. Um, Achievement list, totem list, um, things you can kind of check off if you, as you do them. This, so this is probably something if I'm going to be using this to check things off, I'll, I would probably make a copy of it, laminate it or something. Uh, so it gives me that option to replay it. Unless I'd have to look up unless they're selling uh, replacement copies of that. Okay, so next up in the top of this. So I think this right here is potentially expansion stuff. Because uh, I think they were selling, this was a Kickstarter uh, copy, I believe, that they were selling at the con. I would have to verify that. Um, because they talked about certain things were in it, kind of like Dungeon Crypt stuff. Because they, they're selling Dungeon Crypt stuff as its own expansion as well. So I think this kind of automatically came with it, potentially. I'd have to verify if this comes with would come with the base game uh, in the future. So this says it's the Crypt, Crypt of Thorns. It looks like it has a pack of cards, um, some punch out pieces, and potentially map. Yeah, and more map stuff. Um, but instead of sailing around, it looks like you're on land. That I'll look into later. Because I know that wasn't part of the main game that I opened up and got to play before. So I know that's not critical to starting off the game. So I'm going to get to the pieces that are critical to playing first time. So in the box, as you can see, it has multiple smaller boxes to help store everything, which is really nice. And uh, I know not everyone agrees, but to me, bags. You've heard me talk about it before. Too many games don't come with the correct storage option. 
this comes with enough Ziploc bags of the right sizes to help you out and uh, set, uh, putting it away and so you can quickly set up the next game. Okay, and then we have more Ziplocs. So of course, that, again, uh, so a little standy. I'll have to dig through and figure out which goes on that standy piece goes with that. And then some of these boxes I think might be empty because they're made for once you start playing to store them a certain way. Yeah, so this is an empty box. It says use quest. So as you play, you, you complete quest cards and you can put them away here so you don't have to destroy them so it's easier to replay the game, which is wonderful for a legacy style story game. Okay, now there's something there. Let's see what I can get out next. Okay. There's an empty one. Uh, that one's empty as well. But A, it helps space things out and first storage solution between games and to keep things moving around that other one. This had a piece of foam, as you could see. Let's see what these are about. Stuff in that. Uh, let's see. Stuff in that one. Definitely stuff in that one. And then we got down below we have all these punch boards. So now we're getting to a point I can move the box out of the way. Let's see the punch board. Now before I move this box away, I like how they've taken this artwork and expanded it all the way into the whole box. So it's not just oh it's on the cover and on white inside. It it continues the theme throughout, which I always appreciate. I'm gonna set that aside now and we can dig into all the other fun jazz. Okay, let's see what's in these individual things. We may not be opening them all because I know some of these things you don't look at until certain points in the game. So these are the, I believe, monster cards. We'll take a look at some of them and we can go over the, how they open if they have the quick release seals and stuff like that. So at first glance, it's pretty obvious because it has this gold line across it. That should be a quick release seal. Let's see if I can get my finger around it. I've cut my nails semi recently, so it's a little bit harder at this moment. There we go. So sometimes that happens where they stop tearing, but it gives you enough to break the plastic. And to the trash pile on the floor, which gets picked up later. So these are all numbered. Um, so as you play certain scenarios, they will tell you which number um, monsters you will encounter. So what we'll do is just turn over number one because uh, this is part of the quick play as it teaches you, so it won't uh, spoil much of anything th for the rest of the game. If I remember correctly, it actually uses uh, two of these, I think, potentially side by side, and the way it plays and talks about conflict. There's certain rules for that, and covering up uh, spaces on here, There, because uh, these hearts on the cards actually represent the health of that monster. And then... It, they also have uh, extra abilities that might show up in those spaces as well. And then kind of talks about their head, their mouth, their body, their arms, and certain effects depending on if you hurt, uh, cover certain sections. Of course, we're not going over the full rules right now. We're just kind of trying to show off that artwork and how these work. So if, uh, the top of the card is going to show off the actual monster itself. Uh, they're going to have a name. They're going to have a level. The number that's also shown on the back uh, like I said, their general health um, and then attack and defense uh, type information in this corner right here. So in general, that's kind of how a monster card looks, um, but we don't want to spoil it. I do really enjoy this artwork on the back, kind of uh, the, the land artwork at the bottom and shadows, the clouds and everything. And it kind of gives you that ominous feeling of not knowing what you're going to encounter. Um, those 
I'm trying to remember if ha they have a Ziploc big enough for those, but for now they're gonna go back into that little box or the bigger box, not so little. Okay, now we have this box. Here's where a lot of our components are. So we have some metal coins. So we'll take a quick look at. Came in bags, two different uh, sizes or, or counts. Try to show those off right there. Uh, kind of a copper. Definitely makes you think of pennies, uh, the color and the weight of these. Probably a little bit heavier than a penny, of course, because they're bigger. Uh, but really nice artwork, the way they've done that on the actual coin. As you could hear, they have a nice uh, sound to them as well. And we'll look at these bigger ones. These are more of a brass um, style. Uh, since they're bigger, they got a little more clink to them. Again, uh, quite similar artwork style on the that they've uh, they're textured and everything. But nice feel to them. Uh, they're not just round coins, so it makes them uh, very unique in the way they've made them. Uh, not necessarily sharp, but just thin near the edges. So I look forward to actually playing, playing with those. Um, I will say because since I played played the game already and I've seen these pieces, I, I know I like the coins. I did pick up an additional set of those when I bought the game. Uh, you can buy just the coins separately. So for those who are interested, uh, you can pick those up for other gaming needs. Because uh, they came in a pack. It looks like this exact same amount like I just showed off here. Just packed up. I don't know the exact number in there. But they are a coin I would recommend um, if you enjoy metal coins. I'm going to put those aside now. And let's see what else was in this other box. So we've got our bag of wooden bits now. And then underneath will be some cards that show off these different bits. So first off we have uh, these red wooden. These are blood drops. So you use these when taking damage and indicating uh, different characters' health. So you use these to track. I'll try to show them a little bit closer. So a nice simple uh, droplet shape, nice and thick, uh, standard wood uh, component as you would expect, but just a unique shape that you don't see as often. And then we have a bag of some gray cubes with a, I don't want to call it a meeple because it's a full person uh, outline. Uh, so, so you use this one to move about the ship, which I'll show off once we get to that uh, component. Um, but yeah, the, on your turn, you're basically going to move this around and select an action from the ship. So you kind of have to move and do something different. Uh, you have some uh, tokens. Uh, these are just gray wooden cubes. I'm trying to remember what they're for right now. But again, not a how to play, so I even forget. It's okay. Uh, but yeah, they're they're used in gameplay. We have some smaller red cubes, also out of wood. And then we also have some of these turquoise uh, uh, not cylinders, but the as you can see the shape, but but they're they're tall. So, use these to track other things in the game. So nice, simple wooden components. Uh, teal, teal in color, we got had the gray ones, the red ones. Teardrops. 
uh, each one already in its own bag. Makes it easy to store. So for now, I'll put coins in this other one down there so we can get the rest of this stuff out. So let's, we're going to have the ship component. So here, we're, how well I can show that off. So you actually use this in that storybook uh, map where uh, the ship uh, sits in there and moves uh, between the different ocean sectors in the map book. So nice uh, plastic printed component has some nice texture on the side of it and multiple colors. Kind of you can kind of see the windows. You can see like a a steam pipe different st stuff on here so they, they've definitely put some detail into this that is not just oh here's something cheap try to see if i can show all those colors and there we go so i, I definitely appreciate the effort they put into that and we got some decks of cards which i can go and bust open So this is going to be some equipment cards and potentially something else in this deck. Again, a quick release strip on the deck. As long as I can grab it with my nails, we'll be all good. There we go. So opened nice and easy. Uh, so, there's some uh, different equipment cards here, some starting pieces, uh, some gear, a starting passenger, starting recipe, starting recipe. Uh, I don't want to show too many of these cards because, of course, this is a you find certain things and their number a certain way, so you get them during the game. Uh, it won't spoil too much if I look at them, but it looks like there's some more recipe cards of different food, some different weapons that you can earn throughout the game, some more uh, equipment style cards, be it books or uh, medicinal style things. Um, and just uh, general exploring stuff and stuff that can help protect you, be it um, shield style stuff or protect uh, other protective gear. So again, I don't want to give too much away um, while it's not going to necessarily spoil it. I also want this to be something that we can all discover as played and not give too much away right now. But as you can see, there's a decent sized deck of uh, cards in this way. Um, they're a little thin. Uh, not the thickest of cards. Uh, white core. So I would be mindful if you ever decide to shuffle these. I don't know. From the opening, it looks like I may have nicked the side of one of these cards. Um, so just the slightest of blemishes um, on the edge of it but that's all on me so just as a key to be mindful as you handle these cards uh, so now we've got some smaller cards again a quick release on these and more trash all of these have the same back. Oh, no, they don't. I stand corrected. So they have two different backs. Uh, almost a scroll style back on that one. In the middle of it. And this has almost a jewel looking component. 
So I'm going to open this other one because this also has some of that jewel looking one. And if I can find and see the start of this quick release, we'll get it. There we go. And again, okay, so this whole stack is that jewel right there. So these cards are used to determine certain values during the game. Um, you might draw them at certain occasions. Uh, they may give you slight bonuses and abilities. The majority of them have a number have a symbol or so many up here, uh, which were those uh, till wood components. And so you, you spin those wood, uh, the till wood components uh, to basically turn in one of these cards for its ability in some way. So I won't show too many off, but we'll look at a random one. So see how it has two up there, it has a number in the corner, a bold attempt uh, it says discard this card to do something, uh, basically flip a card of that symbol then these right here, look at the top one, these appear to be uh, abilities, um, I see like watchful, I see tough as nails, so it appears that these are abilities that different characters can earn or achieve throughout the game. So like I said, I don't want to go over too many of them, because I don't know what could be considered a spoiler, and I want to learn that as I discover them within the game itself. But what we can do is at least put these decks of cards here, keep them on screen as we go to the other components for now. So that's that box empty. Now this last box, instead of it being uh, just kind of a paper cardboard style box, it's a bit thicker. Again, still cardboard, but it's a thicker board. And instead of it being the, the side flaps and everything, this is a magnetic closure box that flips over its top. So a little bit higher quality in this. It's kind of the, the treasure chest of the boxes, per se. Uh, multiple decks of cards in here uh, with extra foam to hold them in place, which is really nice. Uh, you don't you want them constantly sliding around, or you can divide them up. So... We'll try to pull a deck or two out at a time and see all that plastic sticking together. So we have a quest deck. Um, so as you go through the storyline, it will say game or get quest number such and such, which gives you some key words, gives you different goals to, to aim for as you travel around. But again, since it's open-ended, you can decide to complete that quest or not. But by doing it or not, it will either hint, help or hinder you in the future in some way. Be it that, oh, you can't do this one as other things easily. Or it's easier to do this because you already have that quest card. Uh, so I won't open these up um, so we don't divulge too much information. But again, the art is quite beautiful. It has the kind of the snowy mountain peaks. It has the number in the corner. And then... Uh, kind of set, has like a keyword on here. It talks about the quest. And so these keywords at the bottom will come into play during the game. So i trying to remember how many of these are quests. So yeah, so we have another quest deck that's full of quests. And another. So let's see how many decks we have total of quests. And more. And it looks like, okay, so this says it's an adventure deck that um, might have something else in it, be it valued or something else. So we'll look at the artwork. Again, I don't know what is on these because um, didn't, we didn't get to the adventure part of the game. I haven't told you to draw these cards yet. So again, I don't want to spoil it for myself or everyone else watching this, um, but it does have a nice 
thick deck of cards with a different card back, which is nice. Easy to keep all these separate. Um, right now, this is the full stack of quests that you can potentially earn and get to go through as you play. So, a nice thick stack of those to look forward to. Uh, another deck of the adventure cards. Right now, we're at two of those. And this last one is... Oh, what did it call these cards? Um, these basically kind of indicate weather, a, a type of weather or natural disaster or events that could happen. There's uh, actual several different uh, difficulties set into these that mi that mix into a game. And so I don't think you actually use them all every game. So it's kind of randomized weather and uh, simple events that could affect you as you're playing. So like this back one, like see how that symbol at the top is different than this. So that shows there's different ones. This is Timber Traders, a huge barge loaded with timber approaches. You pay one coin to buy two materials. So these events aren't necessarily just weather. They're uh, ways to gain material or, or potentially find out information from something that uh, you otherwise would not have had the random chance upon getting. So I, I do like how you can gain these quests. You can use them uh, to your advantage depending on what you have or have not found yet. You of course have different types of cards, um, adventure cards, uh, item cards we've talked about. So it'll be interesting to see the full depth of the story and how many of them are actually used as you play. But yeah, that's that treasure box. Um, I'm going to try to put these other cards back away by finding out which Ziplocs they fit in. And then we'll get on to all the punch boards. So it came with multiple baggies right here. So I'll be able to fit the cards, at least the stacks that are on one size. Uh, just so they don't mix too easily in this one of these boxes. You could do that in there. And then this will at least keep them in there. So this does have a pretty decent storage system at least of all these uh, nested boxes and things you can use. So now we're going to get to all the punch boards. So first off is this ship board that you can see how easily that came out of that. Um, so it's not the thickest board, um, but it also is not as huge a risk of tearing because of that. Uh, so like we talked about, you have that, uh, not it's not the maple, but that person uh, marker that moves around the ship to do different actions on here. So this is kind of the main, the main board that everyone uses on their turn, uh, you can kind of pass it around or or just kind of leave it in the center. Move the person on the deck, do the thing. It says uh, choose, uh, do two actions that are different down here and then uh, the event cards are used. Um, in the back, so it's dual sided uh, depending on number of players. So let's see if we can get a nice uh, clean sound out of snapping one of these pieces now. Not too bad. Uh, pretty nice crisp sounding pe uh, snap. They do pop out quite easily. That's the first one that hung right there, but it didn't hang, hang very far. So the back of these have some other symbols. And so they're uh, I believe ran potentially randomized. I'm trying to remember because I don't know if we got to using these when I tried the game. Again, they're, they're snapping quite easily. And then when you get to the um, character boards, now in the game, it you don't actually pick just one character. Depending on the number of players, you split up the characters between everyone playing. And then they they each have uh, particular abilities in the corner up here, kind of like strength. Um, 
I'm trying to remember what that one's about. Um, but the main thing is you have the captain that no one individually plays, but the captain is involved in basically everything. So it has all the abilities, or some of all the abilities, but everyone else has only some of them. And then other special abilities. And they can each attack differently. They may have a special weapon. Uh, but based on... And, so, and then, all, of course... Uh, so I don't miss it. On the back of these, they have like a short uh, short synopsis, a little story about who they are. So if, if you want to get into the role play aspect of playing, you can be like, okay, this person does this, um, or whatever it may be. And so from my experience of already playing, uh, as you can start to see, it's a very diverse cast and crew within the game, um, both gender and uh, racial. So again, you can tell these are uh, coming out very easily. Uh, these are the cardboard shits of the coins we've already looked at. So I'm trying to remember. Um, it may be that because there's a Kickstarter version, it already came with metal coins in it. Or I don't know if they just send, send both, are going to be, be doing both in it for every version. But you do have both cardboard and, or at least I have both cardboard and metal coins now. Uh, cardboard cardboard being in the pinch board itself right here so then you have some different effect uh, type tokens uh, you have different goods that you can acquire as you play uh, carrots wood wheat meat that's the closest one to it hanging and it did not hang very much pretty easy to make that fall off Yeah, I'll go ahead and finish punching these, and then we can pack it up and unbox our next game. So yeah, if you have any questions about this, feel free to ask about what you're seeing. More than happy to show off some of the components closer up. As you can tell, all the, all these are popping out very easily. Uh, it does it has not felt like any of them are going to rip or tear at all. So as you can see, a quick pop, and it's out. And the nice thing is with all these Ziplocs that the game came with, I'll be able to uh, throw these into Ziplocs and throw it into the box. And then once I start playing, I can sort them out even more. Some more of the bigger coins, and then we get to some more different style tokens, uh, be it uh, mixed meat, uh, larger uh, blood drops if uh, something takes more damage. Uh, some numeric triangle tokens, which I'm not sure how they're used yet. We have a special, uh, looks like some kind of potion token, a diver style token, which I'm not sure how it's used yet, a, a creature of some sort, a port board, a captain token that can be kind of passed around uh, more of those and then each of these has um, a token for the different characters in the game because they're used a particular way and that was the last punch board for that I'll throw that into the punch box i have a box full of all the punch boards i've done this year kind of cool to see how many i've punched out so let me get one of these ziplocs and I'll 
bag these away until I actually play. And the nice thing is, so it comes with bags that are big enough to put a player board in. And so when you're done playing, you can fit this um, character board plus all of the components that were with that one character into its own individual bag. So then you can track components they had, materials they already had, or if they were already hurt or something. It makes it that much easier to open it up and start at the next uh, game. So I do appreciate that they thought through that as well. I'm going to put those zip locks up in this other box until we end up playing. It won't be a problem. But it's set so once you do that, all of those can go into that box pretty easily for even e easier storage. So but almost everything loose or, or small can fit into the different uh, nested boxes. And I'm throwing pieces on the floor on accident. I promise I like the game. I want to keep the pieces. Let's see if I can see that piece real quick. There it is. Okay, so let's box this back up. Um, I probably won't unbox the, all the expansion stuff tonight. Um, I will show off that I did pick up some. So to replace some of the tokens, I picked up some of these resin pieces. Uh, kind of, it replaces kind of the meat, the wheat, uh, the wood, and some of the idle type of tokens and carrots. So they're more like printed resin pieces instead of just cardboard for tracking the resources. I picked those up as an extra as well as an add-on. Uh, but of course, you don't need these. Uh, you can easily play with all the cardboard ones that we just packed away. Um, so what I'm not unboxing is the Sleeping Gods Tides of Ruin expansion, which is going to have more maps, more cards, and such. Um, and then that little... Uh, I guess I can show it. I picked up the game mat. I still have it in plastic. This is a dual-sided kind of a night and day style mat. This is more for when you're in attack, uh, dealing with the monsters, and because there's certain ways that they lay side by side on the map and overlap uh, your attacks. And so this just helps you lay them out. Wasn't needed, but it's, it looks really nice. I figured why not since I was already going all in on the rest of it. So then we can just pack away all these components. Um, it's made so all these boxes just fit into the box as long as I get it right. might have to put this in that box. Probably need to put those components in the box instead of outside of it. What I can do, I'll put them in this empty one. There we go. So then, I think I opened it up. That was extra. Uh, extra stuff, I'm gonna make sure it fits there. I'm going to see if end up seeing if these should fit into that box or not. But I can probably lay them side by side for now. At least show off the pictures real quick. We'll do that. Storybook. fit right in nice and easy so that was unboxing uh, sleeping gods the 
base game and that may have included well, I believe it was the Kickstarter copy that they were selling that I bought so that that extra Ziploc bag that I didn't open up may have been uh, Kickstarter exclusives or an extra little mini expansion that I didn't go over uh, but we can leave that for another date <laughs>